This patient's got metastatic neuroendocrine tumour and as you can see from the CT, he's got double metallic stents placed through the stricture of the common bile duct. Now there was a plastic pigtail stent also placed through this, the tip of which we think created this small pseudoaneurysm arising from the right hepatic artery. When it was removed, he presented with massive hematemesis. So here we're trying to embolize this branch. So I've got a sidewinder two catheter. I'm going to pull it down into the hepatic artery and angiography confirms that pseudoaneurysm arising from a branch of the right hepatic artery. We thought we initially we would sacrifice this vessel and we could do that quite safely. Um, but as you can see here, the 2.4 French prograde catheter, I've pulled it back down that vessel and it ends up sitting quite nicely within the pseudoaneurysm cavity itself. So I decided I would pack this cavity with Azure CX hydrocoils. And this is the first one I'm trying to deploy. And you can see it keeps trying to prolapse into the branch of the right hepatic artery. So I decided to then go for a slightly smaller microcoil and deploy this within the cavity instead. And that's successfully deployed and it's detached. Um, contrast injection shows that there's still a large cavity present, which is not surprising. So I'm then going to deploy a further coil, similar size, again successfully, and then a slightly larger coil. And as you might predict, uh, one of these coils then, unfortunately, is going to escape into that right hepatic artery because this pseudoaneurysm had a relatively wide neck. What I would have really liked to have used would be a framing coil, such as those made by Penumbra, and then there goes the coil. And then we could have packed within the framing coil using these CX coils, and there'd be much less chance of one of them escaping. But this coil actually is migrated quite peripherally and isn't going to cause any harm. I'm now moving on to longer hydrocoils, and you can actually work these backwards and forwards with the catheter so you can use it a bit like your guide wire. Once you've got some of the coil placed within the cavity and within the other coils, you can then pull the coil back whilst pushing your catheter forward to embed it more within your nest of coils. And that's the technique I was using here. And again, you can see there's still quite a lot of this cavity left. And we're just looking from two different angles here and that confirms it. So we're going to use an even longer coil. This is 14 centimeters. And as it softens up, they actually get easier to deploy. So I then pull it back into the catheter again and work the catheter forward and push the coil forward and it will coil up quite nicely. There's very little chance that any of these are now going to migrate into that vessel. But unfortunately, as you can see on angiography, we've still got quite a way to go with this and I'd use quite a lot of coils by this point. So I then decided that I would use Onyx 34 to completely fill that cavity. And we're just going to rotate the tube around to check in different planes as we're injecting exactly what's happening here and to check that we're filling this cavity quite nicely. And you'll see that as we're injecting Onyx there. And this is a slightly more radio opaque version of Onyx, which is easier to see as you're injecting it. That actually looks like quite a good result now. So we're going to pull the microcatheter back and do what we hope is completion angiography. And here you can see that the cavity is almost completely occluded. And following this embolization using both coils and onyx, he had no further episodes of hematemesis and actually made an uneventful recovery and was discharged home within a couple of days.